Here's five sprinter van hacks to make your life just a little bit easier. Awesome. Oh yeah, we're saving that one for the end. Let's suppose it's that time of year that you're changing your oil and you've decided to change your oil filter as well. I had to dig this thing out from God knows where and I use this far more often than most people. So instead of throwing this thing in a toolbox somewhere, why not keep it in the exact same place it gets used? Throw some caulking glue on the inside here, drop it on top of the oil filter cap. You can leave this thing on indefinitely and you'll never have to go searching for this next time you change your filter. By the way, this specific hack hasn't been fully tested, so I'll update the description after a few thousand miles just to make sure the vibrations don't break the glue or anything like that. By the way, when purchasing one of these, do not use the one you see here in the video. The weld points are so weak that it can break far easier than it should. Instead, use something with proper welding. And I'll try and leave some affordable alternatives for this thing that work. I'll do my best to leave ones that I think are better quality in the description below. Right now there's one that's going for about seven bucks. While on the topic of oil changes, I really don't think I need to tell you just how much of a mess it is changing your oil. I for one have left a stain or two in many customers' driveways and it is a real mess to clean up. I read a comment that went something like this. It was like, oh, it's just one bolt you need to remove every year or so. Well, the problem isn't loosening the bolt. The problem is just how fast the oil comes out when the bolt is loose, especially when the engine's warm. Man, that oil flows out really quick and you better have a container big enough to catch it all. Alternatively, you can use a device like this that screws on in place of the oil cap. And this just makes life so much easier. In fact, if there was one upgrade I thought most people should get, it would probably be this. Now, keep in mind, they updated the oil pan slightly somewhere between 2010 and 2014. So just make sure the piece you're getting fits your model year. All right, so we have your oil maintenance covered. Well, let's move on to the fueling. Here I'm talking about truck diesel. Now specifically, I'm talking about the pumps where all the large truckers go to, not the regular diesel pump. You see, these high flow nozzles don't work directly with your sprinter in that when you try and put that nozzle in like and this, squeeze the trigger, it it'll trigger you. that auto See? shut off mechanism that's built in to the nozzle. Fortunately, there's an expensive adapter that costs about 16 bucks. But for those of you who don't want to spend 16 bucks on a little piece of plastic, there is of course a $2 funnel option. Both work pretty similarly, so it's really up to you in terms of what you want. Now you might have noticed the pump you're seeing here says 20% biodiesel, which probably isn't something most Sprinter owners want to be running on a regular basis. However, if you do find a truck stop which has maybe a 5% or less blend of biodiesel, that might be your best option. Using this larger truck diesel, I see a noticeable increase in mileage by about 10 to 15%. So if you're willing to spill a little bit of diesel while trying to fill your tank, this might be an okay option for you. Speaking of diesel, do you ever wish your van burned it faster? No, just me? Well, say no more. Introducing a curtain rod you can use to idle your engine a little bit higher than its default. This is a $2 curtain rod. It adjusts by twisting the end to get longer or shorter, and you can adjust your revs according to the length. As you can see here, it works pretty well. There's only a few circumstances where idling your engine a little higher than usual makes sense. If you happen to be stuck somewhere during the winter and you need to use your van as a heat source, well, it's certainly better for your engine to run in cold weather at a slightly higher RPM. Mercedes makes these factory options where you can have high idling just from the click of a button. But let's be honest, most sprinters aren't equipped with those options. 
so unless you want to spend a lot of money getting that installed, this might be your best choice. Now, I don't need to tell you how bad it is to idle your sprinter for long periods of time, but if you do find yourself in a situation where you need to, well, might as well make it a little better for your engine. The other scenario where something like this could prove useful is if you happen to have a limo slash party bus sprinter. Those sprinters generally have some form of alternator hookup to charge the rear appliances, whether it's TVs, sound systems, auxiliary AC, the list goes on. And that can put a pretty large strain on your alternator. In fact, with everything on, it's possible your alternator may not even be able to keep up. Using something like this can make sure your alternator is running at maximum capacity. And that can be really useful if your bus is parked somewhere and you have customers in the back. All right, finally the one we've been waiting for, and that is starting your engine with a fork. Now, just like many of you expected, it's not just a fork. It's a fork with a transponder chip glued to the back. And here's what that chip looks like. Now, why did I destroy a fork to prove this point? Well, it's important to know that your ignition module, that is the thing you plug your key into, really works more like a light switch than a keyhole. This means that there's nothing mechanically different between your ignition module and one in another sprinter. There are only software differences. This can prove extremely useful if your key breaks or if you're worried about getting a key cut in that as long as you have this little transponder anywhere near your ignition module, you can start this van up with pretty much anything. It's important to note this only works for model years between 2007 and 2018 here in the US. And the most important part of this is knowing you have a fork on hand whenever you're driving. It's kind of one of those things where you're like, man, wish I had a fork on me right now, but you don't. Well, in this case, you will. Okay, let's get it in right there. Got my fork in, turn, and turn again. Awesome. You can even take the fork out and use it just in case you need to uh, have a snack while you're driving. <laughs> For more helpful tips, uh, subscribe to Sprinter Fix. All right, I know this video is a little more lighthearted and a little goofier than usual. But in order to thoroughly spoil this lighthearted mood, here's a more serious video on Sprinter Van maintenance and repairs.